Since this video is meant for people who want to learn more about unit building, I don't fully explain the mechanics and stats in this video. You'll need a decent understanding of Fire Emblem Awakening's mechanics to fully understand what I'm talking about. So if you haven't played the game before, I'm sorry, but some of this might not make any sense to you. But hopefully you can somewhat enjoy this video anyway. Some of you may or may not know my favorite game of all time is Fire Emblem Awakening. And when we had the cough cough outbreak, I spent a lot of time playing and studying Awakening. I'm not even joking when I say I have almost 900 hours in this game. So I figured why not spread some of this knowledge. So for this video, I'll be going over unit builds, which includes the best classes and skills and things like that. This is just one part of a big video idea. That'll just be easier for me so I don't have to edit a giant video all at once. So, with our introduction out of the way, let's get technical with Fire Emblem Awakening. When you start up the game, you'll be asked to create a male or female main character. Details like the birthday and physical appearance won't change anything in Robin's final build, but the gender of your Robin will change a lot of factors. But let's just start off with a male Robin. Then you'll be asked to choose an asset and a flaw. Hands down, the best asset and flaw combination is magic and luck. A luck flaw only brings down the strength and magic by 1 and luck by 3. Other than that, it affects nothing else. Since Robin will have a magic asset, the minus 1 won't mean much. Along with the fact that a magic asset gives Robin plus 2 speed and resistance, it's easy to see that a magic asset and a luck flaw is the best combo for them. Since we're already talking about Robin, how about I talk about his build first? We have his asset and flaw picked out, so we can get right into his final class. Easily, his best class is a sorcerer, since they have good magic and can use dark magic. Dark magic users can use special tomes like Nosferatu and Ruin. Ruin has a very high critical hit rate, and Nosferatu can heal damage when attacking an enemy, so we definitely want to make use of those. For his skills, you'll want Limit Breaker, All Stats Plus 2, Ignis, Vantage, and Arms Thrift. Limit Breaker is a DLC skill that can raise your stat caps by 10, so having an extra 10 to all stats will be useful for obvious reasons. All Stats Plus 2 is another DLC skill. I know having All Stats Plus 2 sounds like overkill with the Limit Breaker, but here's my explanation as to why. With Limit Breaker, most unit stats will cap it around the mid 50s. And since most units have a few stats that sink to low 50s or high 40s, it helps giving those stats a boost of 2. So for example, with the asset and flaw we gave our Robin, he has 48 skill and 51 defense. I think in the context of most stats capping in the mid 50s, those stats could definitely use a buff. Ignis is a skill you can obtain by reaching level 5 as a Grandmaster. The Grandmaster and Tactician class is exclusive to Robin and can be passed down to any of the second gen units. Ignis is a skill that adds half of the unit's strength to a magic attack, or vice versa. Since our Robin has 41 strength, half of that gets added to his magic during the activation of Ignis. The trigger rate of Ignis is equal to Robin's skill stat. And since our Robin has plus 2 on top of a 48 skill cap, that means you have a 50% chance of Ignis activating. You'll most likely be paired up with another unit, you'll get a skill boost so your chances will increase with that as well. Vantage is a skill you can get from the Myrmidon class at level 10. Vantage allows the unit to always strike first even when attacked if the unit has half or less HP. I think this is a good skill to have equipped on your Robin since if he dies, it's game over. So it's good to give him a fighting chance if he's ever about to die. Finally, we have Arms Thrift. This skill can be obtained as a level 5 mercenary. Arms Thrift is a skill that lets a unit use a weapon without losing any durability. And since the activation is times 2 your luck, you'll only need 50 luck for this skill to activate 100% of the time. So if a weapon can't lose durability, that means it won't break. So if it won't break, I like to spend the extra gold to get the unit's weapons forged. The weapons I like to equip on my Robin are Celica's Gale, Book of Naga, Ruin, and Nasuratu. Celica's Gale is a tome that always allows the unit to strike at least twice. And if a unit has enough speed, they can even attack four times. Along with the bonus damage that it does to flyers, you best believe this is one of my favorite weapons in the game. Anyway, back to forging. Even though Celica's Gale allows you to strike at least twice, it's not that powerful. So I always like to forge the maximum amount of might that I can. And if you do that, you should get 9 might. 
That doesn't sound like a lot, but keep in mind you'll most likely be attacking four times, so it'll do some damage. The other forging slots can be whatever you feel is necessary at that point. I choose to raise the hit to 85 and critical rate to 11. The Book of Naga sadly can't be forged, but it has some good base stats and deals bonus damage to dragon enemy types. All I did for Ruin was raise the hit and might, since it really only needed that. And same thing for Nosferatu. Like I said before, forging is mostly upgrade the stats that need it, then boost whatever else you think should be boosted. So, for a quick recap, the best class for Robin is Sorcerer since they can use Dark Magic and have a high magic and res cap. His best skills are Limit Breaker, All Stats Plus 2, Ignis, Vantage, and Arms Thrift. And his best weapons are Salika's Gale, Book of Naga, Ruin, and Nosferatu. And if you picked a female Robin, everything is the exact same except for two things. I replace Vantage with Gale Force and replace Book of Naga with Mire. Gale Force is a skill you get from level 15 Dark Flyers and it allows a unit to act again if you defeat an enemy. Gale Force pairs well with Mire since it has between 3 and 10 attack range. So if I ever need to reach an ally or a certain point in the map, I can use Mire to defeat an enemy far away, then move again. I promise the others get shorter since I won't have to explain as much. But moving on, let's talk about Krom. Krom's best class is a Great Lord, with his best skills being Limit Breaker, All Stats Plus 2, Luna, Hit Plus 20, and Rightful King. Honestly, Krom doesn't have a lot of skills to pull from, so obtaining a good skill collection was a bit hard. I know some of you may be wondering why I'm using Luna instead of Aether. It's mostly because of the trigger rate, honestly. The Aether trigger rate is skill stat divided by 2, and Krom only has 53 skill. So he'll have a 26% chance of activating it. Aether is a better skill, but the activation is so low it's hardly even worth it. The Rightful King skill does increase that 26% to a 36 since it increases trigger rate of skills by 10%, but come on, 36% is still pretty weak. I'd rather the 63% trigger rate with Luna. I then gave him hit plus 20 just for consistency with his attacks. For his weapon layout, I gave him the Exalted Falchion, Killer Lance, Brave Sword, and Spear. The Brave Sword is pretty much like Celica's Gale, the Killer Lance increases critical hit rate like Ruin, and the Spear has two range just in case Krom can't reach an enemy for whatever reasons. Since Krom doesn't have arms thrift, his weapons can break, so I try to use the Exalted Falchion most of the time. Also, I forgot to mention this, but I keep an elixir on all my units at all times just in case a healer isn't around. Next up is Frederick. Frederick's best class is Paladin, with his best skills being Limit Breaker, All Stats Plus 2, Luna, Lance Breaker, and Pavice. Lance Breaker comes from level 15 Griffin Riders. Almost every weapon has a Breaker skill to counter it. All the Breaker skills do is give a unit plus 50 avoid and attack to whichever weapon is associated with the Breaker skill. And the reason I gave Frederick Lance Breaker is because of the Beast Killer Lance. The Beast Killer Lance deals bonus damage to horseback units. So I gave him Lance Breaker so he could try to avoid it. I then gave him Pavice, which can have the damage of Swords, Lances, Axes, B-Stones, and Blight damage. The trigger rate of Pavice is equal to Frederick's skill stat, which means he has about a 54% chance to have that damage. But since he already gets plus 50 avoid whenever he encounters one, he should be okay most of the time. And taking half the damage to a good chunk of weapon types is always a plus to me. For his weapon layout, I gave him a Killing Edge, Armor Slayer, which deals bonus damage to armored units, Spear, and Brave Lance. His stats are fairly balanced, so he doesn't turn out to be that bad of a unit. Next up is Virion. Sadly, Virion is one of the worst units in the game, but I tried to give him some workable skills and items. His best class is Sage, with his best skills being Limit Breaker, All Stats plus 2, Hit Rate plus 20, Tome Fair, and Life Taker. Tome Fair comes from a level 15 Sage and increases magic by 5 if you attack with a Tome. Almost all weapon types have a Fair skill associated with them. But I only use the Weapon Fair skills when a unit is using one type of weapon. And Life Taker comes from level 15 Dark Knights. Life Taker recovers 50% of a unit's HP if they defeat an enemy. For his weapon layout, I gave him Thoron, Rexcalibur, Recover, and Rescue. Recover fully heals an ally and Rescue is a staff that can teleport allies next to the user. Most of my healers have Gale Force. That's just in case an ally needs healing and can't be reached. 
The healer can defeat an enemy, move again with Gale Force, and then heal. But since male units can't obtain Gale Force, I thought giving him rescue was somewhat close to the concept. Like I said before, Virion is one of the worst units in the game, but I did try to make him work. Lastly for this video is Sully. Sully's best class is Swordsmaster. And from now on, I'm just going to start calling Limit Breaker LB and all stats plus 2, all 2. For her skills, I gave her LB, all 2, Luna, Vantage, and Sword Fair. Luna is a skill you get at level 5 as a Great Knight. It ignores half of an enemy's defense or resistance upon activation, and the activation rate is equal to her skill stat. Sword Fair is obtained by reaching level 15 as a Swordsmaster. It's similar to Tome Fair, but raises strength instead of magic. I then gave her advantage because she does have low resistance, but she more than makes up for it with 60 speed. But if she's ever in trouble, the vantage should give her a fighting chance. For her weapon layout, I gave her Killing Edge, Armor Slayer, Leaven Sword, and Brave Sword. Even though Sully only has 45 magic, I always like to keep a 2 range weapon just in case. Stall also happens to be the exact same build as Sully, but that doesn't really surprise me since they have very similar classes. Well, I think this is a good ending point for part 1. Hopefully you guys enjoy the concept of this video. Like I said at the beginning, this is going to be a multi-part series because I don't feel like editing a, a giant 40 minute video. And if you have any questions about the skills I picked or the items I picked or anything, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, I'm more than happy to discuss things like that with people. And if you have any better ideas for like classes or skills, feel free to DM me on Instagram. My at is robindunks. I always appreciate looking at other people's perspectives for like classes and stuff, so don't be afraid to reach out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I will see you all later.